receive a breakthrough tonight receive it there's a woman in here or there are women in here you are fearful of relationship I need you to run up here I want to pray for you come up here I want to pray for you run up here to me hey come on lift your hands and begin to just receive because there's a major breakthrough about to take place you might be on the floor praise the lord <laughs> hallelujah come on lift those hands and receive your breakthrough come on he's healing come on close your eyes lift your hand you come to receive from the lord you've come to receive from the lord you've come to receive from the lord so lift your hands right now Come on, close your eyes. You come to receive from the Lord. Close your eyes. Lift your hands, and it's going to be broken today. Come on. Come on. That, that's you. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Come on. Yay! Oh, Shaka, Yele, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, I call it that hurt, all of it got to go, every bit of it, yay, come on, pray in the Holy Ghost, there's a healing taking place. in here. Lift your hands all over this room. Selebo, laba, fa komol, ye, yerebo sha, ha ha ha, yai, shali bi 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 okoya, fando, ye, sala, mololobo.
Lelelebelemosha. Rasta. Come out of her. You come out of her, you foul spirit. I saw you. Pick up. Lelele. Lift your hands. I don't like that sound. Create another sound. Lift your hand. With the music, create another sound. Create another sound. Create another sound. Strings, lift your hands. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. That's right. Be lifted Everybody lift your hands. Come on. Jesus, you be lifted. Open your mouth. Come on. Say higher. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Be lifted higher. Come on. Lift your hands and say Jesus. Jesus, you be lifted high. Come on. Lift your hands and say higher. Open your mouth, come on, say higher. higher. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, you be lifted. Higher. Everybody open your mouth and say higher. higher. Open your mouth and worship him, say higher. higher. Everybody open your mouth. Cut out the music, come on. Jesus, Jesus you be lifted. Open your mouth, everybody. Higher. Higher. Come on, be lifted. Higher. Come on, everybody, say it. Jesus, Jesus you be lifted. Higher. Come on, be lifted. Higher. Be lifted. Higher. Open your mouth. Come on, say it again. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Open your mouth and receive higher. Oh, be lifted higher. Come on, say, come on. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Come on, be lifted higher. Oh, be lifted higher. Him all over this room. Jesus, Come on, you worship, be worship.
people at? They still praying for folk? Hallelujah, Jesus. Where they at? Okay. Um, um, Mama, PJ, Tiffany, Heather, you want me to sit back down? Okay. I got to sit down. S sit down. Hiya. Yeah, Jesus be lifted. Okay. I can't hear y'all. Don't sound like worshipers. Come on. Be lifted. Open your mouth and say, Jesus be lifted. Come on, sing it to him. Come on. Higher. Be lifted higher. Now look up and tell him, Jesus, you be lifted. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher and higher. Higher. Oh, be lifted higher. Lift those hands all over this room. Lift, 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 lift. Lift those hands. Oh. Zana in the high, high end. let our king be lifted up. Hosanna. Hosanna. Of those hands. There is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness. Come on. In the atmosphere. Oh, come. Come on. For in the sanctuary, God is here. God is here. Come on, tell him again. Say, come on. There is a sweet anointing. Come on. Anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness. There is a stillness. In the atmosphere. That's him singing to you. Oh, come lay down, lay down the burden you have carried. Come on. For in the saints you God is here. God is here. Ah, ah, ah. I'm dead. 
desperate for you. Oh, everybody lift your hands and tell them, come on, say, I'm lost without you. I'm lost Would you sing it from your heart? Would you sing it from your heart? Everybody, over your mouth, one more time, come on. Say, I. But lift your hands and sing it without the music. Come on. Say, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. Come on, sing it like you mean it, yeah. If you mean it from your heart, only he can heal you tonight. Say, I. without you. I'm lost without you. Hallelujah. Well, bless the Lord. How many people feel the presence of the Lord in here? Or would you tell about three people around you, tell them I'm excited about your future. I'm excited. If you have any questions for the women about ministry, maybe you're a young lady out there, you want to know how do you keep yourself or maybe you're an old lady out there. You want to know, is it too late for you to go forth in your ministry? I want you to ask these questions live. And, um, and they're going to answer the questions. And I'm going to take a break. Go for it. Anybody has a question? Anybody? I have an unsaved sister. And I want to know, how do I reach out to her? Well, I've reached out to her, but I was, I could tell that, the enemy was attacking me when I reached out to her. And I want to know how to do it without me letting my feelings get into it. But letting the Lord work through me to reach her. What, what you mean the devil was attacking you when you reached out to her? Uh, maybe I worded it wrong. And yeah. forgive me for that. But no, like not. she just went, she just flew off the handle like, oh, oh, I don't need your devil. help. I yeah, don't I need it. to go to the church right now and okay. stuff like that. And so I let my feelings get into it because I felt like of course. maybe I wasn't doing it right or... Whoever want to answer that, go for it. I mean, I, I will. I have my brother here with me tonight. I know he wouldn't mind me talking about because we grew up in the same type of home. Um, my dad with the drugs and alcohol and everything like that. So he went through all the same type of stuff I did. Um, and I know just to tell you, it's a war. It's, it's not pretty because the enemy wants God's people. And so it is a war. Um, what I would say is don't take it personal one, because that your sister, your brother, whoever you're fighting for, they love you, but there's a stronghold that's in their life and it's through prayer. It's through fasting and you never give up. And it may not be in that moment, but you are sowing seeds every time you show your love. The Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. So you continue to show that love to her that despite what comes out of her mouth, she doesn't mean those things. Those are, those are, her own disappointment that's her own shame in herself that is like that that you know hurt dog when you go to help it and it barks to try to bite back when you're helping but um i, w I would just say stay continual don't quit do not give up and your prayers god hears i just feel to encourage you right now god hears your prayers Sometimes it's not about saying the perfect thing to them. It's continual prayer and fasting and then just showing your love for them. Amen. Anybody else? Go for it. How do you feel when the only person in your house is saved just you and your husband is not saved, your kids are not saved, and they give you purity of trouble? When they, and there's trouble. 
She said, what you do when the husband ain't saved, the children ain't saved, ain't nobody saved. She in there and they just give you know, up. with me. Yeah, they mess they with her. They sanctify the food the Holy Ghost. I mean, I pray, I fight with the girls, fight with the husband. What did I do? You I fight with do. them girls. You don't let them run your house, do you? You fight no, with I'll, them. I'll fight with them. Here. I know that's right. See, we do. You're going to get in, you're going to get out, you're going to do what I tell you to do or get out. One you know, we, we do that. Yeah, yeah, we fight. Praise God. Come <laughs> on, go for it. Then, woman of God, what you do, you wait upon the Lord. Amen. And while, as you wait, you keep on praising. So your praise is going to bring you out and bring them through. Come on. Now you just keep on praising the Lord and just keep on loving on them. So you got to, and you got to approach them in the right way. You got to uh, show them love and kindness. Don't don't withdraw back. You got to a household of the, the saints. Amen. Keep on keeping on and keep on loving them and see God work for you. So you got to wait on the Lord. But in due season, if you don't, if you think not, God will manifest. Hey, I, w I want to tell you this too. I don't, I don't want you to, uh, and, 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 and never, never talk to your children or talk to your husband out of frustration. Because when you're always being attacked all the time, sometimes you respond out of that frustration and not out of a pure place. You mean well, but sometimes you just go off and you be like, I can't take no more. I'm up to here with it. So be at peace and don't be frustrated. God got, he made you a promise. He said, Train them up, and when they old, they won't depart. And your husband is sanctified by the believing wife. So hold God to that word. Yeah, it is so. Amen. So there's another question in the back. Go for it. I've been working in ministry for, for years, and then um, the Lord helped me to come out here to Texas, and, just, and he told me it was going to be a new season for me. And, and you, Mother... Um, Carnes, you were saying that you had God had given you a ministry, and if that was later, that you uh, walked into the ministry that you're in right now, and just in this new season, I'm just trying to, um, you know, just allow the Lord to direct me, but it's, you know, new means new, so, you know, just tell me, could you tell me how the Lord just began to break into your, this ministry that you're in now? Well, it was a matter of just trusting God because, you know, a lot of times we think when we get a certain age, there are certain things that we should have accomplished. And oftentimes we get frustrated because our timeline isn't God's timeline. But I've learned how to wait patiently. It didn't start out like that because I was kind of looking at other people, setting them as my example. But I began to truly allow the Lord to cause me to hear him. You know, and my son was a mentor to me. He don't know it, but I would oftentimes, you know, I had been saved a long time, but I was jealous, but it was a good jealous because I realized that even though I was in church, that's what I was. I really wasn't allowing the word to totally control my life. And so I've, I'm learning that as I wait on God, he's doing it. You know, it's not always our timing, but it's his timing, which is the right timing. So don't get frustrated where you are, because sometimes we put up other people's opinion above God. So just wait patiently on the Lord. And, he, and you will get there. You know, I know you probably got somewhere you want to be by now, but it's not, it's not your time. Even though it's a new season, but your season is every day is a new mercy. Every day is a new day. So just wait patiently on the Lord and he, you'll get there. What advice do you have for younger women and men who want to walk in the will of God and they feel like they're kind of scared to come out, but they know it's their calling and they want to walk in God's glory not, like never before. I just, I want to start my own ministry and I'm 24 years old, but I, I feel that I'm young, but then I feel that I'm, I'm wise. So I just would like to know what advice do you have for the younger generation who want to walk in God's will? I would like to say to you, wait your time and wait your turn. Many times we are very zealous for, you know, the gifts of God and to um, be on a platform, but God will make you in private so that he can present you in public. And the worst thing that you can do is be exposed before time. 
The worst thing that you can do is have opportunity before you are fully developed. So what you should do is let God make you in private. I went through a season of solitude where I didn't have anyone in my circle, anyone in my corner. It was just me and God. I rarely watched TV during that season. I rarely went out to the movies. It was just me and God. I would pray, consecrate, fast. And that's what you need to do because you have to be pre prepared when God gives you a platform. Many people get to that platform and they're not prepared for that platform. They think that it's a performance and it's not because you'll see very quickly that demons are real. And just like in the Bible, like the demons beat those boys up, that's what will happen to you if you're not fully equipped and developed so that you can walk into that gift of the Spirit. All y'all can answer this, all the ladies. But if you could give one piece of advice, what would it be? For anything, just like that one bit. To women, right? Sure. Just life advice. Yes. Like little nugget of wisdom. Go. Mine would be know your worth. Amen. Know your value. Know your worth. Because oftentimes, when I think about it, a lot of things that troubled me in my life was because I didn't know my value. I didn't know my worth. So I settled for whatever came along. So mine would be know your worth. Know your worth. Mine would be find your identity, since she said know your worth. You need to know your identity. You need to seek God about who you are before you unite yourself with someone else. There's nothing worse than trying to unite yourself with someone and you don't even know who you are yourself. How are they to know you and you don't know you? I would say seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and then everything else in your life will be added. I would say learn to listen to the aged women because you take a new broom, the new broom knows the floor, but an old broom knows the cracks and the crevices. <laughs> hey, Shaba, you know what I'm saying? Hey. I think we should have ended. We should have ended on that note for sure. But um, my piece of advice would be um, for sure to always put God first in your life. And I know we've heard it a lot, but it's so easy to have anything, whether it be your husband or purpose or your ministry or whatever you're building to get in the way saying, well, God has called me to do this, but then that becomes bigger than him. And so no matter what is God always has to be absolutely first in your life. Amen. Go for it. Good evening. Um, my question is for the mothers, mature mothers, because I have a daughter that's 22. The Bible tells us to train, our ch train up a child in the way that they shall go, and when they're old, they will not depart. But when you train them up in the way of the word of the Lord, and they turn around and use it for a point of re rebellion against you, how do you deal with that? Can I get an example of what you mean? Um, we were, I brought them up in the church. I brought my children up in the church, and I taught them in the Word, and I taught Sunday school, and I taught children church. Right. So now she's like, well, this, she, my daughter will go like, she, she resists the Word right now. Okay. She's out there at a point of total rebellion yeah. that the Word does not apply. Okay. So it's like, okay, you brought us up in the Word. If I was you, I would... She was one thing she said to me. If I was you, I wouldn't. Uh, um, I wouldn't bring my children up in church like that. I said I'd use the only book I know to use, which was the Bible. So we're resisting with that. And I know every time I pray for her, and what she did when she called me, she's like, "Don't pray for me." Mm -hmm. So my question is, how do you? You we we go through the point with children being rebellious. But when you pray, and she, and she sense she know the word. She know the word of God and she know the spirit of God, but she's still at a place of rebellion. And as a mother, from a mother's heart, you continue to pray for your children, but it hurts because she knows when I'm praying for her. Mm -hmm. She'll call me, oh, you're praying for me again, huh? How have you re dealt with the resistance and the rebellion? Now you got to remember, you say your children, how old is she? She's 22, she'll be 22. Okay, well, we must remember she's not a child. So she has, she's a grown woman, has her own mind. Now, does she live in your house? 
No, we 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 could we couldn't abide by the household rules, so she wanted to go on the right. side of it. Good, that's what that's where she needs to be. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But see, now you got to stand in that place of trusting God for her life, and you got to do warfare. I've been doing not warfare. on, but keep on keeping on. Ooh. Not not warring at her with your mouth. I, as a matter of fact, I sense in the spirit that you need to close your mouth. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See, see, I'm mother, y'all. See, I don't, you know, but I, you know, I love you. I'm not talking just to you. This for all of this for me too. See, there come a time you got to close your mouth, and see, and you can, you got to pray to God, and believe God for the saving of her soul, and God know how to slam dunk her, tackle her, and bring her on to Him. I'm just going to ask you guys for your advice. Um, I'm married. Um, I'm married to um, a pastor. We're a pastor of a, a, a really small church, but that's beside the point. My question is, how do I, like, remain balanced? Like, I want to be a great first lady, push him in his ministry, yet I know that God has given me my own ministry. So it's like, how do I stand behind him? You know, I don't, I've been married for 15 years, so I don't want to, you know, get no divorce. But at the same time, I want to go forth in everything that God has given me and operate in the mantle that he's put on my life. But yet I want to support my husband, you know what I'm saying, and push him, you know, to, you know, walk beside him. So my question is, how do I be balanced as a woman of God, a first lady, and a, and a minister myself? She asking y'all, but I would love to answer. But yes, y'all answer that. I have, a, I have a question for you. Is he supportive of you he in your is, own ministry? He is very supportive. He, he actually pushes me forward, you know, but I just feel like, you know, I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm coming after God with my whole heart, and it's like, you know, I don't want to be fat, you know, get the fasting and praying, and then I ne neglect my husband. You know, I just want to give God all I am, but I want to give my husband all he is. It's like... You, uh, you just need to let all that go mm -hmm. and just go do it. Okay. And just go be it. Okay. Because God brought you together for a reason and a purpose. And it says he knew you before you were even in your mother's room. So he knew you had that call and purpose on your life. And he still put you with a husband who has a call and purpose on his life. So now go do it together, but in your own call and in your own purpose. Okay. Uh, and and I, I, I got to say something. Now, yes. now a lot of folks are going to disagree with me on this. But I got Bible, scripture, and verse. A single woman care for the things of the Lord. You do what you want to do when you're single. When you're married, you can't do that. Yes, sir. The Bible says you care for the things of the world yes. and how you may please your husband. Right. So your first ministry yeah. is him. Come on now. Okay. That, that's your first ministry. Before you go do anything, if you go on a fast, you can't even go on a fast without his permission. Because 1 Corinthians 7 said, defraud you not one other except to be with consent for a time where you give yourself the prayer and fast and let Satan come to that 7 and 5. Let Satan come tempt you for your incontinency. So you can't go on a fast without his permission and he can't go on a fast without your permission because his body don't belong to him. 1 Corinthians 7 and 1 said, not concern the things where if you run unto me it is good for a man not to touch a woman. And nevertheless, to avoid for an occasion, let every man have his own wife. Let every wife have her own husband. Let the husband render due benevolence unto the wife. Let the wife render due benevolence unto the husband. For the wife hath not power over her body, but the husband. The husband hath not power over his body, but the wife. So that's what the Bible say. So I know we live in a time now where folk tell you, I'm, I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's why a lot of people by themselves. But when you're married... Your responsibility, even to a man, his responsibility is his wife. And I can't save the world, and my wife can't stand me. So, so God has honored you and given you a husband that supports you and that pushes you. And go forth. So go forth in your ministry, as Sister Heather told you. But remember, your first ministry is your husband. Sub. Mit, sub means under. Mit means forward. You don't go forward until you go under. So once you submit, go under and honor him, God will send you forward in your ministry. And I think that's the way it got to be done.
My question is for you, Brian. And okay. I'm to find out what you would say as far as how do the people in this room basically live out the prophetic on a day to day basis? What are some practical steps they could take to start moving in that? I'm place? glad you asked me that. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18 is a very powerful scripture, and I've been studying it for the last two days. Paul told Timothy the prophecies that he said, These prophecies I commit unto you that went up before you, that you wage a good warfare. When you get a prophecy, you fight with it. What you mean? If there's a word over your life, you don't just sit there and wait on it to come to pass. You fight with your prophecy. And, and let me tell you something. See, some of you, you get a word from the Lord, and the minute things go to looking contrary to the word of the Lord, watch this. You begin to challenge the prophecy. Uh-uh. Don't challenge the prophecy. Challenge the circumstance with the prophecy. Oh, you, you get what I'm saying? Sometimes you get a word and, and, and it looked like it ain't going to come to pass the way you expect. And so what you'll do is you'll say, well, he must have missed God. No, no. The word of the Lord is true. So you got to tell your circumstance, the prophet said this. The Lord spoke this over my life. And if God said it, I'm going to fight till it come to pass. So I say, war with your prophecy. If God tell you you're going to get a job, you got to put in an application. Yeah. If the Lord tell you you're going to get a car, you got to at least go to the car lot. Do you understand? All right. Yeah. You got to fight with your prophecy. So that's what I say. The word of the Lord came over my life as a young man that God was going to make my name bigger than big, larger than large, that I had to remain humble. And he'd take me place I never imagined. But I, I, I had to cooperate with the prophecy. Yeah. So I had to give myself to the study of the word because I couldn't have God open the door. And when the door opened, I don't know what to say. Right. Your gift will make room for you. But a lot of folk get in the door and don't know what to do when they get there. You know, I'm going to say this and I'm done. Remember David in the Bible? He had an anointing on his life to be king. God anointed him, spoke word of life, you're going to be the king. But guess what happened? He didn't know how to be a king. So God connected him with a boy named Jonathan. Jonathan wasn't the king, but he was the son of a king, and he knew how to operate in the king's house. So what God does is some of you in here got ministries or anointing or grace on your life, but you'll never get there because you don't even like people. And in order for the prophetic word to come to pass in your life, you got to fall in love with people because the difference of seasons in your life is a person. Whenever God going to change your life, he changed who you hanging with. But some of you, God can't take you to your next season because you don't like people. Lift your hand and say, Lord, help me to like people. All right, that's dead. Say, Lord, help me to like people. Yeah, so that's something you got to do. So I had to learn how to uh, like people. I had to learn how to put up with folk who I thought was crazy. I recognize in ministry, a lot of folk think because I let them get away, they think that I think they, I know half folk around me crazy. You understand? But Jesus had a whole bunch of crazy folk with him. Jesus on purpose walked with Judas. He knew he was going to betray him. That's what I tell folks. We have a tendency of kicking folk out of, they don't mean you no good. Kick them out your life. You will never be promoted. You will never get to the next level until you learn how to walk with Judas. So you know how to walk with people who you know are out to hurt you, out to betray you. But remember, unless there's a crucifixion, you'll never have a resurrection. So, got to go through that. So, that's all I tell you. Pray, Lord. Hallelujah. Anything else? Come on. Um, thank y'all all so very much. I've, I've been blessed by each and every one of y'all. Thank you. Um, I serve in a huge capacity at my church. And um, in him, I live and move and have my identity. I Good scripture. live to serve. And so, um, being a woman in ministry, I have a lot of challenges. Um, God, I have no problem submitting under people that know how to lead. But it's extremely challenging when um, God, God's given me a gift as far as being able to um, project manage and be able to write the task to make the vision complete. But then whenever, you, whenever I try to um, make the deliverables and to press forward to be able to obtain those actions, I get a lot of resistance. And then you, so I go on automatic and I'm just, I feel like I'm running in one place. So my question is, um, so now I'm questioning, am I, where God, am, I, am I where God wants me to be in the season? You know, because I just want to be 
it's better to there's obedience is better than sacrifice and I just want to be where he wants me to be it's not my will but his will to be done in my life so how do you how do you deal with that um, in ministry oh opposition is a sign you in position <laughs> see if you're not going through nothing you're in the wrong place because the minute you deal with opposition that means you're in the right mm -hmm. place okay so now God is working on you. Yeah. See, a dead man can't be offended. <laughs> See, right now, if my enemy was up here and I cussed him out, he's just going to look at me if he did. So if we're offended or affected or upset or problem when somebody says certain things, it's really something in us that's still alive. Wow. Yeah. And God is trying. Listen, I said in the ministry, I love my pastor, okay? My first yes, pastor. Amen. I love my pastor. Yeah. But I sat in the ministry under a pastor who would revile me, who would talk about me, who oh would God. preach on me, who would say all kinds of things to me, who would stand me up in front of the church and talk about me. Okay? I never opened my mouth. I never reviled. I took it. I endured hardness as a good soldier. Oh and because I went through it, I am where I am today. And, and, and to be honest with you, she was one of the people that I wanted to bring on the program today. No matter how bad she did me, I appreciate the deposit that she made in my life. So whoever's giving you resistance, always recognize you don't wrestle against. Yeah, it's, yeah. So always recognize it's spiritual. You're in the right place. Do what God tell you to do. And when it's time to leave, you'll know it. But, uh, any time for you to leave right now, stay there and take your whooping and let God get everything out of you won't get at you. Huh. I noticed that my prayers are filled with tears and weeping. Oh, that's beautiful. That's How do prayer. I know if I'm travailing and birthing yeah. versus being just yeah. emotional in prayer? Well, let me tell you something, baby. When you get to the crying and the weeping, la 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 something is going on in the spirit. So you just Yo keep shot. on crying and weeping, and 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 uh, uh 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 you will begin to birth. See, a woman just don't spit a baby out. She has to go through the process of it. She has to uh go through the pain and the dilating and all that that type of stuff. And so then, when the time is right, then that 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 fruit that's in her womb will drop, will come forth. Keep on uh crying and weeping. And uh, if it's emotional, when we are birthing, we are emotional. Yeah. Whenever you go to crying and broken and contrite and all that stuff, mm -hmm. that's when you, whatever you need from God, tell him then. Because he's nigh to them of a broken heart and a contrite. See, I'm a cry baby in the presence of the Lord. Yes. I cry every five seconds. You understand? But I know, I know that's what moves God. Yes. These people tell me they know God don't ever cry. Something wrong with it. Because right. when, when you in his presence... He going to break you. Yes. Yeah. So yes. be convoluted and be emotional. God, we serve an emotional God. Yes. We have not in high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Michelle Obama went over there and touched the queen and the queen got mad. I'm so glad Jesus is a Jesus that I can touch. Amen. He can be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. One more question. Go for us, Sister Rachel. I want to ask Brian's mom, what was it like raising a prophetic son? When did you know, and how did you help him activate his gift? Wow. Well, hmm. <laughs> well, first of all, he wasn't supposed to be here. He was a miracle baby because I wasn't supposed to be able to have any more kids. They said if I had another child, it would be one in a million. But I wanted a son because at the time I was married and I was going through some stuff. She was married to him, y'all. This is yeah. my daddy. This is my, my daddy. <laughs> she was married to him. All right. Now, this is her ex-husband now. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. But, okay. And you Go know, ahead. as women, sometimes we feel if a man has a son, there are certain things that are happening. Yeah. Well, that was my desire to have a son. And well, God gave me a son. Um, and the whole time I carried him, I was in pain. It was a painful pregnancy. But the ministry that I was brought up in, um, prophets were poison per se. 
if you didn't get the word from your leader, then it wasn't God. But I didn't really know about prophets. You know, I, I read the Bible, but it came to a place where I had to get to know the Bible for myself. I was dependent upon my pastor, just to be honest. Whatever she said was the Bible. That's how I received it. Because I figured if this way I got birth, there's no way they're going to tell me the wrong thing. But there came a season in my life to where my son, because I thought he was rebelling because of everything that every, you know, that yeah, we was, was coming. We was, we was fighting. We was at heads because I felt like if he was going against what my pastor was saying, it couldn't have been God. But the Lord, there was a season too that he would always have stomach aches. And he would, I would always have to take him to the doctor. And they could never really understand what it was. But later in life, the Lord told me it was his word germinating in his spirit. But there came, that, a season, <laughs> <laughs> there came a season in my life to where, you know, he was going through so much. And as a mother, you know, you just don't understand why all of this is happening. If I'm, you know... I'm, I'm going to church, I'm listening, I'm trying to be obedient, but my son, what he looks like to me is God, but at the same time I'm being told it's rebellion. So um, we were at odds. They would, like he said, they stood him up in front of the church, and he joined the church, and I know he only did it because I was his mom. I knew his heart per se wasn't in it, but he was being, you know, trying to be obedient. But there came a season to where I was like, now, Lord, I need your help. Because, you know, I know he's not a bad child, but it just looks like he's out of, out of the will of God. But he wrote me a letter. And the letter... <laughs> She's going to cry. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> but he wrote me a letter. He said, Mom, if you pray to God and he tells you that I'm out of his will, he say, I'll stop doing what I'm doing. And I was like, wow. So I, you know, and I read that letter and I'm like, God. So I prayed and the Lord began to just minister to me and told me to get to know him for myself. He said, don't depend on another man to tell you who I am. He said, get to know who I am so that you can see what's before you. And so the Lord began to use him and we began to travel and I began to travel with him. And see, the movie Passion of the Christ came out. Yes. Oh, you my God. You know, the God. one that Mel Gibson wrote. And there's a scene in the oh, movie where, where Mary. Jesus was walking down yeah. the, 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 the Via yeah. Della Rosa. Yeah. And when he fell, his costa. mama was there Marily to costa. get him. Yeah. And God used yeah. that movie to tell her he that he's going to go through yeah. some things yeah. in his life. Oh. And uh, when he falls, you got to be there to you pick him up. There. And I tell you. I say, Lord, whatever it takes to cover my son, for the sake of the gospel, yes. I'll do it. And that caused me to be put out the church because they said you can't follow your son and be a part of this ministry. But they I was obeying out. God, they but I thank first. God for what he done. I thank God that he was obedient, that he didn't allow men and people to pull him out of the will of God. I am just grateful that God was faithful you know I thank God for what he's doing but it was it was to raise a prophet you go through much you go through much if you got a son or a daughter and you know the call of God is on their life I don't care what it takes humble yourself I had to humble me I had to humble me and listen because he provoked me to the more of God you know so I am grateful that God trusted my womb to bring forth a blessing to the nation. I don't take that for granted. So I love him. I appreciate him. He has lifted me, my, even my mindset. So I just bless God for allowing me to raise God for allowing me to raise a man of God, a prophet, one that's been through much. People just see, see now, yes. but they don't know the hell and the process. But I thank God that he didn't quit. He didn't give up. He didn't allow people to position him before God raised them up. But I thank God for allowing me to be a part of my son's life. Amen. Love you. Well,
that's that's my story and uh in that beautiful yeah. yeah okay well bless the lord we're getting out of here i want to say something to women and i want you to hear me and i and i'm done the lord spoke to me and told me that um and listen you know y'all black folk get mad when i talk about president obama but he need the holy ghost but let me tell you what the lord said the lord told me that jezebel and ahab would rule for two terms but then he told me after they came out of office, Athaliah would come next. So that means that whoever comes next, and I'm not saying it's going to be a woman. I'm not surprised if it's a woman. But whoever comes in office next will have a very pro-feminist spirit. Okay, hear me. Women, hear me, because sometimes when you talk like this, People think that he's a male chauvinist and he think women ought to stay in their place. But women, there, there, there is a certain place in the kingdom that God has given you. Say man, And make sure as God use you and God anoint you that you don't take on that dominant man, domineer, can't nobody tell me what to do. That's why you're going to be by yourself or old maid and ain't nobody going to marry you because you got that kind of spirit. God does, and I'm telling you very strong what the Lord told me. I told, I told him that the Lord told me everything was going to go feminine. God told me men's clothing was going to go feminine. And look at, look at it now. I mean, it, 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 look at men's clothes. It's feminine. Men wearing dresses. Bruce Jenner on TV talking about some he a woman. Crazy. It, it, it's a spirit in the land. Really, there's a spirit in the land. And these are yokes and strongholds and the church sitting up here preaching these feel-good messages. When we don't want to deal with the demons that are tormenting the, let, let me, let, 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 when this young lady, she was bound by drugs. She didn't need a feel good message, but it took the anointing that destroyed that yoke of all for her. And these things that are going on in our churches, folks sitting in church with demons of homosexuality, perversion, lesbianism, addiction, and we don't want to say that because we don't want to offend nobody. But one thing about the truth, it's going to draw you or it's going to drive you. So women, be anointed, go forth in your ministry, be what God has called you to be, but ask God to keep you, 1 Peter 3 and 4, with that meek and quiet spirit. That's what the Bible said. It's of great price. I'm not telling you don't have a voice because if you don't have a voice, you don't have an identity. And if somebody don't do so, that's crazy. But be very prayerful and ask God to work on you. Lord, teach me how to be a lady, how to be a woman. Crystal is anointed. She's a great singer, isn't she, y'all? She's going to sing one last song called Rain. And then we're getting out of here. And uh, so just lift your hands and worship as she sang. And again, we'll be back next month. I believe it's in uh, June the 18th. Is that right? I think so. Yeah, but it's going to be awesome. So bring sick folk and crazy folk. Bring me somebody with demons in them. They're going to be manifesting all over TV. Praise God. Bring your daughter. Praise God. And bring them. Get them here. Amen. We got devil in them. Bring them. They need to be set free. All right? Thank you for coming. And it's such at the last minute. But thank you for coming. Come on, give her a great big God bless you, and I love you. Can y'all give them a great big hand? Come on, everybody, can you stand to your feet? We're on our way out of here. Come on, you can simply just sing along with us. We want to leave here reminded that God reigns above over our circumstance, our situation. So let's just sing about how good it is. Come on, can you repeat after me? Let's do this. Sing, my God reigns. See our God reign. You got it. Lord, you reign above every name. Come on, you got it. Let's do it. My God reign. See our God reign. Yes. Lord, you reign above every name. Come on. Power and majesty. Power and majesty. Dominion, authority. Everybody say, you reign. Yeah. Come on. Power and majesty. Come on, dominion authority. Everybody say, come on, let's take it up in here. Hey, see my God reign. You got it. Our God reign. Yes. Lord, you reign above every name. Yeah. My God reign. My God reign. Our God reign, y'all. Lord, you reign. Dominion authority. Yeah. He reigns. Come on, you got it. Come on, power and majesty. Everybody say, Dominion authority.
Lift your hands. I don't like that sound. Create another sound. Lift your hand. With the music, create another sound. Create another sound. Create another sound. Strings, lift your hands. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. That's right. Be lifted Everybody lift your hands, come on. 
Jesus, you be lifted. Receive a breakthrough tonight. Receive it. There's a woman in here, or there are women in here. You are fearful of relationship. I need you to run up here. I want to pray for you. Kalobosa. Sebrobotudibia. Come up here. I want to pray for you. Kalabandolobosa. Run up here to me. Hey! Alababa. Come on, lift your hands and begin to just receive because there's a major breakthrough about to take place. You might be on the floor. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands and receive your breakthrough. Come on. He's healing. Come on, close your eyes, lift your hand. You come to receive from the Lord. You've come to receive from the Lord. You've come to receive from the Lord. So lift your hands right now. Come on, close your eyes. You come to receive from the Lord. Close your eyes. Lift your hands and it's going to be broken today. Come on. Come on. That, that's you. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Kasha. Hey. Kataya. Come on. Yay! Shama! Shaka, Yele, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I call it that hurt. All of it got to go. Every bit of it. Yay! Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. There's a healing taking place. in here. Pick up. Let's 
Shai. Para. Rebasso. Shakuya. Yei. Yeah, you are mine, and I'm angry. Yeah, you 